Hello again, everybody. I figure it was time for another update as far as this project and uh, how it's going. And uh, the answer is, after much hardship, it's going okay. Um, so, geez, I've done a lot of stuff since last time. Uh, so where we left off last time, I had OpenGL running on HoloLens, and I had um, a basic rendering of my two-dimensional UI running as a hologram. Uh, in HoloLens, and I had that working, but you couldn't click anything, or better yet, you couldn't interact with anything. So um, one of the first things I did was I created um, in my framework, or in my uh, library, uh, my graphics engine, um, I have another uh, subsystem called VUI, which is my Virto UI subsystem, which is now getting pretty large. Uh, I've added a component to that called an interaction manager, and what the interaction manager allows me to do is um, it's a spatial input handler, that's what it's called. I was trying to find it in the code while I was talking. That allows me to actually capture HoloLens events from the actual HoloLens SDK for user interaction. It allows me to actually tap on and interact with my UI components, uh, which is awesome. I also um, made some changes to make my, uh, I guess you can call them holographic slates, or my holographic UI components, which I call slates. More generally, um, I call them just spaces. You can now interact with those. Um, or those are now those now have depth. So I've actually added some three-dimensional feel to those by just basically backing them by cubes. Um, so that combined with the with the interaction is is miles ahead of where I was the last time I did this project. And actually having that working where I can actually tap on and interact with with things from um, that I'm actually seeing right in front of me. That is one of the biggest building blocks that I need before I can actually start working on the final app. So um, a lot of this stuff I've been doing for like the last geez, like months and months of work has all just been getting myself a really solid foundation so that I can actually start working on the actual app. And I'm finally almost there. Um, so from a code perspective, basically I, I allow myself to use a 2D, uh, very uh, mobile-like uh, paradigm for creating two-dimensional UI components with familiar concepts like views and subviews and buttons, and then I construct those in a two-dimensional plane that I call a view, and then I've added this component called a slate controller, which wraps the view and, and basically wraps it for usage in a 3D environment. Uh, so that was a lot of work to think about and get all that to work properly. I mean, even, even the, the dragging component where you could actually tap something and pinch it with your finger and actually manipulate it by moving your hand, all that was so much work. I mean, the HoloLens is not a straightforward API to use at a low level, so certain concepts and getting them to work were kind of like pulling teeth, and that's one of the reasons why I'm making this C++ um, UI framework for me to work with so that it will be, from a high level, easy to do things that would otherwise just be super hard. Um, so I got that working. Once I got that working, I decided to take on the task of trying to make holograms uh, more realistic. So one of the ways that HoloLens works is when you see a hologram and then you move in a way that something in the real world is obstructing the view of that hologram or occluding it, for example, if there's a hologram in a room and then you go into another room and between you and the hologram is, say, the corner of a wall, you're not supposed to be able to see the hologram. So your 3D graphics engine shouldn't render that. Well, it turns out the way to actually make that work is very complicated and very computationally expensive. When I first learned how, when I first actually found out how Microsoft was doing it, I thought it was one of the most ingenious ideas that I'd seen in a long time. Very clever. Um, but the actual implementation of it is a giant nightmare. So in short, what they're doing is they're providing applications with a way to access the entire three-dimensional room as it's being scanned by the three-dimensional camera that comes with the HoloLens. So as you look around, your program can ask for, in varying resolutions, three-dimensional meshes of triangles that make up the entire three-dimensional room itself. And then what you can do is you can render that room um, into the depth buffer. So you draw it in a way that you don't really see it, but it still is occluding objects that might be behind it. And then finally, once that has properly been rendered to the depth buffer, you will not see objects that 
are behind, you will not see holographic or hologram 3D models that are behind that 3D surface of the actual room. It's very complicated, but um, that's how it's supposed to work. And it's a cool idea, and I thought, well, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to write this ridiculous class called the Spatial Surface Manager. And the whole job of this in my framework is going to be to start receiving the 3D meshes, process them as I call update on them once per frame. And then finally, when I ask it to render those, it will render them based off of the mode that I'm asking it to render. So for debugging, I have it turned on so that I can actually see the meshes, um, you know, so I can actually see them and make sure they look right. And then when I turn off the, the actual visibility of them and only render them to the depth, then I'll know that they're working properly. So here's where I, the first real insane problem happened for me where I got, it's just, it was really rough. Um, it turns out that those meshes, even when you ask for HoloLens to give you the lowest resolution possible, add up to over 100,000 triangles or 100,000 polygons for my apartment, and I'm sure for a lot of rooms in general. So you can end up having hundreds of thousands of triangles that you have to draw once per frame, and you don't even see them. They go to the depth buffer. Well, immediately I was finding that the performance of my app when I ran it on the actual HoloLens was way shitty. Like it was under 30 frames a second and it was really choppy. Um, and that was a serious cause of concern for me because I had turned the shaders all the way down, tried to make it as fast as it possibly could go with my current engine setup. And I came to the conclusion that angle, uh, trying to emulate OpenGL to render these things was just too slow. Um, just uh, last Saturday, I spent 12 hours in a row, 12 hours nonstop, trying to figure out how in the hell I was going to get this to work. And I was really, really stressed out, and I was like, what the hell am I going to do? This is too slow. So finally, I came to the conclusion that um, for this specific case, I was going to bypass Angle entirely and use Direct3D itself, directly render to the DirectX graphics API to render these meshes. So I created a surface class that's entire job was to render this thing using Direct3D, which is much simpler because of the way Direct, uh, Direct3D's design is compared to OpenGL and the fact that it's not being emulated. Um, it's much simpler to draw these surfaces using Direct3D than it is with OpenGL. So what I did was <laughs> I wrote some code to uh, bypass angle, preserve the direct deck state as it was set by angle, render, set the uh, set specific direct deck shaders to prepare to render the uh, spatial surfaces, render them all together in one shot, and then when they were done rendering, put the context state back the way angle was expecting it. And I do this every time I want to render the entire room. And once I did this, the performance went back up to uh, what I would consider acceptable to solve this problem. Down the road, I think both the HoloLens hardware and the OpenGL API will both be optimized and made fast enough to do this, but I, you know, I needed this working like yesterday, so I, I obviously had to bypass some things to get that, that stuff to work. You know, this is, this is some of the things you have to go through when you do software engineering and you're using pre-release versions of things that aren't even out yet. You know, you sometimes just have to bite the bullet and go through help. So after working seven days a week on this specific problem, I got the room rendering in a way that I thought was acceptable, and I'm really happy about that because, man, that was so, so rough. So this spatial surface manager I now have working, and the whole point of this thing is, like I said, to occlude holograms. Um, I need it to allow me to also send rays and raycast into the actual room and find out in a given direction how far away I am from real world objects. The reason why this is important is because I will allow the user of the API to place holograms on real world surfaces. For example, in Virto Studio, I might ask the user to place the scene on a table and I need it to not go through the table. And if it does go through the table, I need to have it actually show it going into the table and not confuse the user visually with what's going on. So once per frame, just for, this is just my testing code, I ask the spatial surface manager to do a ray cast. I pass it the world ray. Could do more than one, so this is just an array of one here. Then when it finishes, this little callback is called, and this callback basically just sets the cursor position to where the intersection occurred. And that's it. 
And the cool thing about the way I have this set up is I don't queue Raycast. So if the thread is busy, I just return false out of here. At this point, I'm actually ignoring the return value. But the idea is if I request a Raycast, but the thread is too busy doing one already, it'll just say no. And the idea with this is I will essentially only perform Raycasts as fast as the hardware can without you know giving it too much of a backlog. And uh, this worked really well. I was able to use a lot of my code from my game Drive By Gangster to actually um, repurpose it for this because Drive By Gangster, when you shoot the gun, um, shoots, you know, checks to see if you intersect uh, the world geometry the same way. So that was nice to be able to reuse that. So now that I have this going, I basically have everything that I need to get started with the actual Virto app. I mean, I got buttons I can click on. Um, there's going to be some little things I have to fill in in the interim, but um, I, I really think most of the hard, really hard stuff is behind me. I mean, with, with a couple exceptions. That's the project as it stands. This video is uh, pretty long, so I'm just going to go ahead and say that's it until next time. Um, I'm hoping by next time I actually have some of the actual 3D aspects and of manipulating, you know, uh, actual 3D models working, but honestly, I don't know. Uh, progress is pretty tricky when it comes to this stuff. And uh, if you guys want to see any of these little clips and videos as they unfold, um, you know, I usually put these on my Twitter as, as they happen, and then, um, you know, I'll put them all in these recap videos as well. So um, as far as that goes, if any of you guys want to, you know, support me in the interim while I'm working on this project, um, every sale of Virto Studio goes directly towards supporting this project and other projects related to it. So um, I really appreciate, you know, every single time somebody picks up a copy of that for iOS or Mac, uh, that's a, a huge deal. And uh, if you, you know, when this thing's done, hopefully I'll, I'll have it on the Windows Store and it'll be available for HoloLens owners as well. So, all right, that's it for this week.